Hey guys, Fishing Kid here. Real quick before we get started on today's episode, I just want to give you a quick word on behalf of our sponsor, Whisker Seeker Tackle. I'm here to talk about their EVA floats. They got multiple sizes to hold big baits to huge baits. High vis orange means you can see them from a full cast away. Our listeners can save 25% off with the coupon code BFF25 underscore EVA. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. I'll see you guys next time. All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Beer Fish Fanatics. This is Grandy with Ma Pa Fish, and we have Kit with the Fishing Kit YouTube channel. And today, um, no guest today. I uh, just wanted to have a good conversation with uh, Fishing Kit. We haven't had a, a good conversation in a while. He's been traveling. You know, he's worldwide Fishing Kit now. Uh, we've been pretty busy, so you know, we just figured, you know what, just kind of regroup a little bit here and um, see how things are going for each other on that. So um today want to definitely do a quick shout out to Kelowna Brewery Company uh, our sponsor beer of course and today I'm drinking I'm a hot mess man this is kind of cool it's a uh, it's the double Indian pale ale it's the double IPA Dang. so I'm going hard how about you man I'm gonna go less hard um of course I got the Kelowna Brewing Company beer it is the Black Party New England style hazy IPA Oh, I, I saw that. I'm going to try that next time. I think uh, it sounds sounds good. So uh, I think, uh, let me see. What's the alcohol content? I think I think that's always a good point to bring up. 5.8. Not too bad. All right. Let me see what this guy is. The double IPA is uh, holy. Well, it's not that bad for a double IPA. It's 8.3 on this one. Alcohol content. Mm, yeah. It's not bad. Uh, make sure, hey, everybody, the, everybody's been, you know, getting out to Hy-Vee, buying a beer to help support us and our sponsor. Definitely appreciate that. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be shipping out these koozies out to you guys. So make sure, take a picture of Kelowna beer. You actually, even you can go to a brewery or a restaurant, or whatever. If you get a Kelowna beer, just tag us. I mean, Fishing Kid, myself, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I'll send you guys out some koozies because everybody needs a Beer Fish Fanatics koozie. Right, Kit? Yeah, right here, right here. See, there you go, guys. So, um, cheers. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. Hmm. It's not bad. It's not a, um, it's not as hoppy as I thought it was going to be for a double IPA. I don't think I've ever had this one. I think you had it before. Um, but it's not like super, super duper dry dry hoppy. You know what I mean? Yeah. The the hazy is pretty good. Pretty smooth. I actually took a little break from IPAs. Um, Oh, yeah. So it's been a couple of weeks since I drank an IPA and usually drink IPAs once a week, a couple of times a week. Yeah. So, um, but like I said, everybody get out there, uh, Kelowna Brewing, uh, out there in Southeast Iowa. I don't know. Southeast East Iowa. Um, I don't know. I guess you can, it's, it's, it's Eastern Iowa. So make sure you guys get out there, support them, support local, great restaurant. We're going to get out there. We're going to definitely do a recording out there pretty soon here, uh, as the weather, um, improves and it's not so rainy, not so cold. So we'll definitely get out there. And I wanted to, <clears throat> another topic I want to definitely discuss on this one. Uh, when this episode airs, when you guys see this one or, or listen to this, uh, podcast, uh, there was like a hoopla thing on Facebook, and fishing kit myself kind of got into it. I don't, I, I don't know how. I mean, we we were dragged into it in a way because we it, it hit us it, a nerve. I guess I wouldn't even say a nerve. It just it just kind of hit blindsided us in, in regards to a post um, on Facebook. So I just wanted to address it real quick. Uh, and it you know it, it kind of spiraled out of control of what we anticipated. What we were just in, in reality. I was talking to kit and. Um, I, you know, there's a post and I, I'm pretty sure everybody knows about it who are listeners and people who, who don't know who aren't from local Iowa or whatnot, or whatever the case may be. There was just a post in regards to a spot being blown up. Um, Fishing kit will jump into that in a little bit, but, and then a, a gentleman uh, responded with a remark that, um, you know, it, it, the way it was read and the way it was posted um, it can be read in so many different ways, in so many different facets. A lot of people, um, including myself and, and Fishing Kit, we read as it, wow, it was kind of a generalizing uh, a race, our, you know, the Asian race in a, in a way, and we just kind of felt, um, you know, attacked, I guess you can say, but it could also have been read in a different way. So that's why I just want to address it. It wasn't a big thing. We, you know, we didn't want it to get out of control of the kind of the way it did. So, I mean, you have anything to say on it, Kit? 
Uh, yeah, so, well, I wouldn't say we got dragged into it. I kind of just <laughs> dove right in, honestly. Basically, yeah, on that post, uh, the comment goes something along like, don't tell Asians about a spot because they'll blow because those D bags will blow it up. Mm-hmm. Pretty um, that that isn't the exact words, but it's something along those lines. Yeah. So I called the dude out, reported it, and he was a he's a business owner, and it's kind of go it kind of goes against our mantra. You could say that I had a knee jerk reaction, but with all the stuff going on, and then there, there's a there's there's been a guy trolling my YouTube, basically just saying Asians can't speak English and they keep all the fish so it's kind of like just it's just been building up and after seeing that i was just like all right you know that ain't cool this guy provides a public service to people and then i just basically called him out on it and tried to try to direct people to other services yeah and and just to to give everybody a heads up i i i really did send out an invite to him and it's still an open invitation uh for and if he really wants to come on, I mean, just to have a, a candid conversation, it, it really is open. And uh, he politely declined. Um, and he, he did mention that that post of his and, you know, the you know, to be fair and the way, you know, this is the thing with social media. This is the thing with texting and messaging and, and everything was it, the way he he wanted to, you know, illustrate his point or whatnot wasn't the way that we all read it. You know what I'm saying? And it just goes to say texting posting social media you can read into it um totally different however you wanted to say it um i kind of i kind of understood where he was coming from i mean uh, the way he was explaining what he was trying to say granted i don't agree with him but you know it's okay and that's that's uh, they have different viewpoints and everything and, and that's why i said i i left it as a open invitation if he ever wants to you know jump on we just kind of have a candid conversation and, and really understand um maybe he can change us and really understand where he's coming from maybe he had a bad experience or vice versa maybe we can you know change him or maybe we don't but you know what we can still have a you know a decent conversation about that so we'll leave that at that if that's okay with you man and then just everybody um no threats man what the Come on, guys. That, that was the thing. Like, when we post that, it, it was one thing. Like, you know what? We just wanted to have a good conversation, talk about it. But then people started threatening. I was just like, all right. That that got really stupid. Yeah, when, 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 the, um, when the threats start coming out, I was like, all right. Yeah. I'm I'm getting rid of all this stuff. It, was our, it already got way bigger yeah. than I could have imagined. Yeah, and that's not even what we wanted. We just wanted uh, uh, just to kind of, you know, Obviously, with the sh- that's going on in the world right now, we just kind of wanted to bring it to light that, you know what, we shouldn't all be lumped into one group or expectation, something, whether a- whether Asians, whether you're, whether you're white, you're African American, you know, black, it doesn't even matter if you're Mexican, whatever race you are, we just don't, I mean, obviously, there's always gonna be those stereotypes, but you know, that it's like a small percentage of the population. That's, that's all I wanted to say. So yeah, you can't lump everybody nope. based off of a group. Like a small group of individuals, no. So and you know, I'm I'm not like a what what are, what are those called? Uh, SJW or uh, or like a um, what's that? What's the other thing? Activist type of person. You know, in hindsight, I should have just reported it and moved on. It would have yeah. been less stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, the thing. Normally, was, I would. Normally, I would. It's like, because oh, you're a nice guy, man. I, I, you know what? It was kind of weird because I was just like, I'm I'm usually that guy, like you know like what the you know i'm I, i'm pretty i guess some people could say aggressive but um it's all right man you know what it is what it is and like i said open invitation we'd still love to get a chance to talk with him he seems like a person that you know could have a beer too and you know we can get to know each other a little bit better and just really understand each other so like i said so. yeah i mean he says he's got a lot of asian friends he probably does as as guys do you know we just talk to each other yeah <laughs> and that's cool there ain't nothing wrong with that but you yeah. can't just but you know, I mean, I what, what we talk about, yeah. like as homies, I wouldn't go out and just say to everybody or whatever. But anyways, uh, yeah, we don't want to drag this on too long. It's uh, so we just want to address it, put it out there. <laughs> Invitation still out, so no, no big deal. It's just fishing, guys. At the end of the day, but um, it, it did bring a good point though. It, the post was uh, I guess we we can touch this. this is this is gonna be a touchy subject a little bit? We'll talk about it for a couple of minutes if you don't mind, kid. Um, blowing up spots. <laughs> What what what's your uh, cuz this is how, this is how that whole post 
began. This is uh, this is a big thing. I mean, I don't know if it's just I or I- everywhere else. I know it's a big. Actually, I think it's everywhere. It's a big thing in regards to people blowing up spots, telling other people, bringing their friends and family to bring in everything to to blow up, whether it's your spot or anybody else's spot, even though it's a public location. <laughs> but um, what are you, what are your thoughts? Uh, what do you feel? And I mean, let, let's touch this subject. I mean, we might as well hit it straight on it. A lot of yeah. people think about it. So at the end of the day, it was a public spot. So this guy, he brought somebody, you know, uh, that's, you know, we're just going, we're just going off the post. He brought like somebody to a spot. And then next thing you know, the guy brings like five or six of his friends and the guy kind of called him out on it. And uh, my perspective is, uh, I can see it from both sides. I mean, you have to because it's a public it's a public spot. You mm-hmm. tell somebody, you run the risk of them telling their friends. Even though, even if you ask them not to, at the end of the day, like if you didn't want this, you know, people knowing about that spot. Even though it's public, you know, maybe it's maybe it's like a low key area. Not a lot of people know about it. Mm-hmm. You know, at the end of the day, if you don't want people going there, don't tell anybody. And and on the other side. You know, if somebody took me to a lesser known spot, I don't know if I'd be like, hey, hey, six of my friends, let's let's go over here tomorrow. <laughs> it's I, I think it's just the, the the etiquette and common courtesy in a way. Um, if if OK, this is the thing when fishing kid obviously gets out and scouts and fishes more than I do. So and, you know, if, if the bite is on, he does tell me and he does tell me, don't tell anybody. And I you know what? I, I respect him because if he gives me uh, the opportunity to go, you know, a spot that he, you know, he's actually fishing and fishes there. Um, I respect him enough to, to, to hold that true. You know what I'm saying? So I, I if the world can, could do that, it'd be great. Um, but then there's, you know, you're, there's people are gonna be like, I just told one person, but keep in mind that one person might tell two or three or four. And it just, you know, it's a domino effect at that. So um, just be mindful. I mean, like you just said, I understand from both sides and, and you know what? It, it's still a lot of waters out there. A lot of fish to be had guys. There's no need to get, in my opinion, it's just fishing. It's there's no need to get that complete upset about it i mean i understand it's your spot but then again you should have never said anything if that was the case i mean it's a it's a tough touchy subject a lot of there's <laughs> yeah and I, I know coming from a guy that makes youtube videos so i'm showing spots all the time speaking from experience is i i i try not i don't even try to say where i'm at anymore because if people know they know if they don't people from out of states other states mm-hmm. they, they'll they hit me up like hey what lake is that I'm like. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'd rather I'd rather not say, dude. Nothing wrong with you know sharing sharing your spots and whatnot, but man, yeah. you never know. I tell one guy from South Dakota or something, then yeah, <laughs> he comes but, down with but, like a truck full of people. But you can't get you see, but you can't get too too angry either because you told him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or you know, and that's that that's the thing. Like you can be like, well, I'm never telling that guy again. That's fine, but you can't get completely um, upset to the point where it's it's you know. Uh, it gets almost violent. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just, it's just fishing guys, you know, have fun with it. it you know, this is my thoughts. If, if you're going to get that upset, go grab a cologne of beer and just, just have a beer guys. If, if someone blew up your spot, go grab a beer too. sit back, just, just drink it and just woo take a deep breath. It's all right. And then just never tell that person about that spot again. That's simple as that, man. Just uh, just tell just tell the close homies. Yeah, or, or you know, just tell you know you can always DM or, or private message Instakit and myself when you're on a hot bite. I can guarantee you, I most likely will not tell anyone. <laughs> most likely, <laughs> I mean, you know, it is, but no, um, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that because I know it's going to be a uh, ongoing thing. It's always has been since the day of fishing i mean everybody yeah, sore sore subjects it's very sore <laughs> and it, on both sides it's just you know it's just kind of crazy to see that so let's get away from the downer subjects. Downer, yeah. let's talk about you man because all right so uh i don't know if anybody well t- um today i think uh or fishing kid just put up his video uh he he went down to kansas he had a uh first trip of the year taking his kayak out um you know just after the ice season it's just like spring i mean it's literally about sp- it's spring right now so um how was your trip man because you you went down and it's about a five five and a half hour drive where you went and um 
How, how was your trip, man? Uh... <laughs> Oh, okay, it's just okay, okay. At least the good thing was he got a good tan. <laughs> oh man, I'm like a freaking raccoon for those for those of you that are listening. Yeah, yes, um, yeah. All right, you know what? You just gotta take a picture and post it if you don't mind, <laughs> and just like, look, this is what I look like from from my trip to Kansas. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was sunny, but the weather was all over the place. Yeah, um, I went down there to chase blue cats since we don't we don't really have a. Uh, established blue cat population here in Iowa. So that's why I travel to to these other lakes and other states because they got established populations. The way the trip started, uh, I had to turn around like half an hour in. So that was a bad start already. Uh, basically, the weather kind of sucked. I think it was a bit too early. I'm, I'm fairly new to blue cats. Mm-hmm. Um, I should have waited until the weather warmed up. But man, once that ice comes off, you know, you, you get fish horn and you're like, yeah, I yeah. want to go. I want to go. So yeah, that's the that's the thing. You get fish, fish horny. <laughs> and uh, um, did they get ice on that lake that you were at? Because I know it's a little bit south. Is so it's a little bit south of us. So I wasn't sure how much ice they got, and and was the whole lake covered in ice? Do you know? I have no idea. I mean, I know it okay. freezes, but maybe this past winter there was enough ice to ice fish it in some of the coves. But mm-hmm. generally, people don't ice fish this place. How uh, how many blues did you catch? I caught three, and Mr. Yang caught one. So we got four total. Four total. I mean, no skunk. Uh, the only bad thing was you guys didn't, because I, I saw the video, you guys didn't catch any on the kayak. You, you caught them on the on the bank because you said it was just too windy, huh? Yeah, well, the first night we got there, we tried to get bait. Mm-hmm. We just decided, okay, we're going to go there, catch fresh bait, because fresh bait is the best bait. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> but you got to catch it. Yeah, you got to catch it, though. That's yeah. the thing. They ended up being thunderstorms. What was it? Friday night. Yeah. Friday night from five until like one or two in the morning. Wow. And then, and then Saturday, super windy. We got the yaks out. We were, we we're anchoring. It's an anchoring bite. Normally I'm drifting and stuff. When it comes to drifting, the water temps are up there, maybe in like sixties. Once they hit 60, drifting becomes more of a more viable tactic. At least that's what I've learned hmm. or researched. Cause you ask anybody, catching big blue cats right now they're they're basically just anchoring up throwing their baits out hmm. and when the wind's blowing 15 20 miles per hour in a kayak even if you anchor you're blowing all over the place you can't keep the lines tight pretty much yeah that's what it comes down to and so we uh, did yeah go ahead, i'm sorry yeah you know, we just we just decided to go back in and bank fish and our buddy he had fresh bait chris mm-hmm. he uh he had some like these little carp goldfish things uh, Cause I tried using some carp that I had, some frozen carp. Did get any bites on that? We only got bites on that fresh stuff. That's why I say fresh is the best. So how did Mister Yang do on his kayak? I know. It, so this was his first time. This is, our, this is one of our buddies from Colorado, and he, you know, he we got him into the kayak uh, uh, buzz, and he 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 spent quite a bit. He got got a new pedal kayak and everything. Uh, how, I saw in the video, he's like, how am I supposed to pull up this fish on a kayak? I totally, I, I understand what he's saying because those things can get huge. So, um, but how did he end up doing? And, and does he like the kayak or what is he thinking? Of? And, and blue um, cats. <laughs> um, let's see here. I think he did pretty good. I mean, he stayed dry. He didn't fall in. So that's, that's a <laughs> that's win a, right there. That, that's a win. Especially how windy it was. Um, there was, there was some big rollers. There's probably like, I don't want to say like maybe two up to three foot rollers when we were crossing wow. the causeway there's like a causeway so the wind's just funneling funneling underneath that bridge so we got pretty pretty dicey there uh, we made it out he's still he's still learning the um the nuances of kayak fishing yeah. like how to it's easy to not pay attention like to where your kayak is like if you get caught up you know like tying something or like grabbing stuff putting stuff away then you look up next to you know you you know you're like five feet away from some rocks on shore you know, yeah. you know, I kept having to like, hey, hey, you know, you're kind of close to shore. Like, don't worry about like doing all this stuff. Just make sure, just keep your eyes on where you're kayaking. I know it's, um, it's just something he has to get used to. That was probably a big lake for him to to, to be the initial oh, yeah. uh, kayaking oh, yeah. voyage, I guess you could say. Um, how was the? Uh, I guess you can say. I mean, the bait fish. I mean, you couldn't catch any, right? I mean, I'm assuming. Do you think the storm? mess that up or they're probably just deep Are honestly still, still deep the, the water temp was like 50 i think it was 50 
upper 40s, 50. The bait fish just weren't there. I tried the shad net a little bit, and I'm thinking, you know, we went down below the spillway trying to catch bait. Didn't catch anything. There's barely any flow coming out, but I guess that's normal for that lake. And this like there's uh, certain pools they have. They have like a winter pool and a summer pool, and winter pool's lower. Oh no, man, it was just it was tough, dude. Yeah, I mean, four fish in two days. Yeah, that'd be kind of so. That's a little tough, but you know what? That was, yeah, that was the first lake, but we did fish another lake down there, same area. Yeah, oh, well, a little bit more west. Oh no! Oh yeah, yeah. How how'd you guys do there? Well, the plan was to go catch white bass there because. There's some pretty good white bass at this other lake. Did you catch any? Didn't, didn't catch one white bass the, uh, the the next two days. They're still, I, I think they're still deep. Yep, still early. I think it's too, it's, it's too early. Yeah. Unless you have a boat and you're fishing in like the main river channels. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to get to those fish because they're, they're basically still in their wintering patterns. Gotcha. Once that water warms up though, it, it'll be... Like the white bass, once they start running up the river to spawn or whatever, mm-hmm. yeah, that'll be that'll be when it's time to go, and yeah. it's a little too early right now. I think, everybody, but like you said though, everybody's just so anxious and still like you know, okay, the ice is gone and and weather's like getting a little bit nicer, even though it might be 60s, 70s outside, the water's still pretty darn cold. And I think, like you're saying, but everybody's so excited, and then you go out there, you don't catch anything. It's just like ah, more mm. the bite's tough, right? But I did catch 10 crappies, two drums, and some walleye. Ooh. So it wasn't a total wasted trip at this other lake. And I got a I got the live scope out on the kayak. So that was cool. That's um yeah. How is that on the okay? So compare that to the compare the live scope off the uh, on the yak versus ice fishing. Like um the views is still the same. I mean, what what's the I don't know, what's the difference? If there's um, any. Well, you're on a kayak for one. <laughs> yeah, jackass. <laughs> <laughs> uh the thing is when you're on the ice, you're you're not moving around. And like I said, it was a windy weekend and we're we were even though we we're kind of protected, there was still a good breeze coming through there. So we like even if I found a brush pile, I'd get blown off of it. And it was hard to stay on top of a brush pile. But there were some boat docks and then I went over there pointing around. I see, you know, there's some boaters fishing the docks. Mm-hmm. And I was pointing my live scope towards the docks, like, oh, He's, hey, I see. I, see, I see some stuff nice. right beneath the boat dock. Uh-huh. And then uh, I was like, all right. So I cast it in there. Boom. Hit hit a few crappies. Pretty nice crappies. Nice. So and, let me ask you, when, when you're using that live scope, you know how you're still moving, but can you still see like your your jig or your, your hooks, lure and everything still or no? Because you're still moving too much. Well, it just depends on where your jig is and where your transducer is pointing. If it's calm, it'll be fine. It'll work good. Okay. But it was windy. So I yeah, there was cool. these boat docks. I kept getting blown off the boat docks. So that was pretty annoying. You know, I'd go up there, catch a fish. You know, by the time I'm I'm uh putting on the stringer, tying it up, I'm like twenty feet away from the dock again. So I gotta go back. That was a real challenge. I mean, I could have I could have anchored, but I, I didn't have my anchor on me. It was in the truck still. Because oh. we were just we were just basically messing around. We yeah. got the kayaks out just to get them out. So why did Mr. Yang go with you and fish over there with you? He tried some other spots. Oh, okay. Then I I couldn't reach my phone after I caught some fish. Sure, couldn't you could couldn't reach your phone. Excuse. Yeah, huh? It was it was in my pants. But I was wearing waders and my life jacket. Oh, okay. so I'd have to take off all that <laughs> stuff on the kayak. I just give you a hard time. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, but hey, at least you you caught fish. I mean, it was yeah. good enough. I, I'm 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 looking forward to the live scope on the kayak. Okay, so you you think it's a game changer? Oh yeah, like okay, because I love fishing uh docks here. Actually, I'm that's what I'm going to be doing coming up here. And okay. since we're 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 just gonna go right into what what we're gonna do this spring or whatever, how we're getting yeah. ready. Yeah. So my my plan is get that live scope on the kayak out as as much as I can. So. I mean, yeah, just, you know, just jumping into that now. So it's it's, it's spring. It's, I mean, ice is out. Um, What's your, uh, I guess, whether it's your game plan or what do you recommend for, you know, someone like myself or anybody that's like, all right, ice is over, ice fishing, you know, winter is over, spring is here. We always hear about the spawn. We always hear about spring fishing. It's it's on fire, whether you're pan fishing, crappies, bluegills, uh, largemouth bass, you know, catfish, you know catfish you know the ice out that's what they they call it 
what what's um I guess what's your game plan and what do you recommend for the catfish early right when the ice comes out? Let's start with catfish, sure. Okay. Um, right when the ice comes out, whatever lake you get to that has shallow that has like shallow water and where the wind is blowing towards. What do you mean by when the wind is blowing towards? The side that the wind's blowing to, if it's shallow. Let's mm-hmm. say you have a shallow bay on the north end of a lake, which is a lot of the scenarios that we have around here. Mm-hmm. If it's a south wind, that means the wind is blowing from the south into that northern bay and it's super shallow. Mm-hmm. That's that's your best bet for an early, early catfish. Why is that? Just that shallow water warms up faster and the wind is going to push up any bait, dead fish, whatever. Mm-hmm. Because once the ice comes off, there's all that all those you know dead fish in the ice it all melts and then if the wind is all pushing it all to one side of the lake that's shallow i mean if you were fish where would you go to eat where is easy food like you just yeah. said yeah no yeah. that that makes whatever sense. sides yeah whatever side is the warmest and has the bait that's where you go interesting it's like okay. the opposite it's the opposite of uh summer um that's what my buddy chris was saying especially like uh in the spring when it's warm during the day the fish will be shallow because that's, you know, that's when the water warms up. Mm-hmm. And then at night they'll move, they'll move deeper because that's where most of the warm water is opposed to like summertime, you know, they're deep during the day because that water is cooler. Yeah. And then once it gets to like, you know, the evenings, twilight hours, they move up shallow. So that's, you know, everything's starting to cool down. Hmm. No, it makes sense. I mean, um, it'll probably help. I mean, I, people probably listen like, Duh, Grandy, you should know that. But there might be some pe- people who don't know. But um, that's that's good advice, especially for I I I need to get out. Catch this ice season was really rough for me. Um, at least big fish wise, I didn't catch anything big at all this year. I it was all pan fish through the ice for me. Um, it, it was like, I mean, did I try? Yeah, I tried. I wish I would have tried harder. It was just a little. It's still kind of weird with the pandemic and everything. Just so many things just kind of going on. It was just kind of little tough for me to get out and ice fishing more than you know i wanted to go out more than i wanted to but um i do miss catching something bigger than a 12 inch crappie yeah man people sleep on catfish dude yeah i I, no, you're right i think i think um definitely uh the next you know couple weeks here i'm gonna be getting out i'm gonna try and get out as much as i can uh hopefully catch some catfish for the kids because they've been they've been hungry man they've been like where's where, where's the crispy fish i'm like sorry daddy's been busy i haven't had time to get out there and fish and uncle kit you know went to kansas and caught the fish and ate it all <laughs> yeah because we did, we couldn't catch that much so we had to eat it there yeah but so. with that said the the catfish that catfish bite uh-huh it has not turned on for me yet but i think this weekend's gonna be good Supposed to be seventies this weekend and windy, so just find the shallow side of a lake that the wind's blowing towards. Get some get some fresh bait if you can. I mean, I guess if you have frozen baits, it, you'll probably be fine. It's better than nothing, in a way. Yes, yes. Hey. Can't or can't catch fish that eat bait without the bait. <laughs> what you can't catch fish without can't catch. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, dude. All right. On that note, if you're targeting I'm... a fish that eats bait. It's hard to catch it without bait. There you go. All right. There you right. go. I'm going to grab another beer. You ready? Yeah. What's what's next on the agenda here? Walleyes? Should we talk about walleyes? Well, I'm going to crack this one. I'm going a little bit lighter, by the way. Uh, this is beer number two for me. Uh, I'm doing the light lager, Kelowna Classic, by the way. So I got I to gotta finish this one off still. We'll talk about walleye. I mean, right now, spring... Um, right, or it's not, it's not even spring, it's like pre spring almost in a way. I guess you can say it's just right after uh ice out. I always hear walleyes, this is the time to catch walleyes. I mean, what what do you recommend? What has been your go to, I guess, in a way to catch walleyes? Are there specific spots, um, uh, lures, bait? I mean, what what do you think? Well, in previous years, not this year, <laughs> you know, once I can't stop ice fishing, I just hit the river. What river? Uh, I don't think any river that has walleyes, I suppose. Just fish slow. And what I mean by fishing slow is just, you know, you're not throwing it out there and just burning it, just reeling in. You know, try to work it, work that jig or whatever, mm-hmm. like that little swim bait. Probably don't want to throw too big of swim baits, two and three quarter inch or sometimes three and a half inch is what I used to use before. Mm-hmm. That's what I like throwing for those walleyes. Just fish them as slow as you can in the current that you're fishing. Out the bottom again, always. 
you know, off bottom. I mean, that water's cold. Generally, yeah. generally walleyes are, you know, hugging the bottom anyway. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to be throwing it out and, you know, like just jerking like a madman and reeling off fast because if you can't put that jig in front of a fish, they, they ain't going to bite it. How much, um, how much time do you think we have to, to, to really get after the walleye right now? Aggressiveness, would you say? How much time? Like, you know how, okay, they say right now it's like a prime time to go after walleyes, you know, in the river or whatnot, like right after ice out till about like June-ish or so. I mean, I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Like, is there a specific time to, to really have the best, I guess you can say, advantage of catching walleyes? Normally for me, from like once the ice comes out till like like middle of April. Okay. See, so it's pretty cool. good. And then and then after that is is just the wipers for me. Yeah. So you know, cool. so between the time that the ice comes off mm-hmm. and I'd say what April, they would have done it would have been spawn, post spawn. Post spawn's pretty good. So what's when do they spawn? When do walleyes actually spawn? Like I I really don't know the numbers. Hmm. Like hey, we gotta ask okay. We get we'll Jeff, Jeff Kapaska. Yeah. We'll find out. We'll find yeah, out. We'll find out because um I think uh this episode probably come actually up. no they're no. spawning right now because they're netting right now. <sighs> By the time this releases, everybody, it's that that means yeah actually depending on when when you release this episode, you're right. Um yeah. we talked to they're, Jeff and they're they they are netting right in the next two weeks. So that's it. I think right. in the river they probably spawned because the rivers just warm up faster. These are impoundments that they're doing these nettings at they're collecting fish to harvest the eggs yeah i think that's what they're doing they could just know. be doing surveys while they're spawning is the easiest time to catch them in nets gotcha man so, gotta yeah, start I can't, I can't wait to ask you no no this is gonna be awesome um so you know stay tuned everybody uh we're, we'll have jeff back on from the iowa dnr and we're gonna have him uh here a little bit sooner but we didn't get a chance to because they are busy netting like fishing kid was saying because he's like they are at it for the next two weeks so we didn't get a chance to get him on so hopefully and we told him just you know what focus on work and we'll talk about your work as soon as you're done with that and we'll have a couple of beers with him so that'll be that'll be pretty cool be really good info um information that we should ask him and hopefully it'll help us to, to learn more about the fish. So, um, yeah. And then I think the weeks following the spawn can be pretty good. Cause once they spawn, they're going to be hungry. Yeah. Is that what they normally No, That's the, so after they spawn, they're always feeding, right? Correct. Yeah. I mean, that's why, you know, post spawn, that's why post spawn can be pretty good. Gotcha. Uh, how about Panfish, man, because that's that's my that's my go to, even though I'm not good at it. Um, you I forgot love... about the wipers, dude. <laughs> well, no, I wanted to go wipers after because that was well, wipe, the uh, wipers bite. The wiper bites usually before the panfish start biting. Oh, is it? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Is it really? Usually right after walleyes, I go, I go, I go chase wipers. Hmm. So, so right now, so about two weeks then you would you would say you would start chasing the wipers or three i don't know if they're running yet i'd say okay i'd say like in central iowa like maybe mid-april is when they start really going cool all right well then hey I, shoot you better let me know is because I, I i didn't catch one through the ice this year so that sucked <laughs> so i gotta yeah, catch that, one yeah that usually lasts about a month or so and then then the, all the other stuff like the carp start coming up and keep getting snagged with carp and stuff that's interesting i did not know that so so is there like a pattern of what specific species that you chase first yeah exactly yep so you go so basically once the ice comes out it's walleyes and okay. catfish they're walleyes they kind of yep they kind of go hand in hand like as far okay. as bite goes mm-hmm. and after that i start chasing wipers as the water warms up a little bit they start moving up the river systems and then after that the panfish, well, specifically crappies, they'll start getting ready to spawn in the lakes and stuff. And then a little bit after that will be bluegills. I don't really target bluegills. That crappie bite should be real good, like end of April hmm. through the first, what, couple of weeks of May. Okay. No, that makes sense. Uh, we got to go down south again. I, 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 got, I got the uh, okay from the boss, but I looked at the, the cabins where we wanted to go. It's booked. Kit, Good we camp. Gotta... Ah, that's going to be hard for me with the girls well i'll figure something we'll, we'll figure something out but um borrow trey's uh uh what's it called his uh 
camper his RV. RV his camper. All right. Well, we might actually. We'll just tell him to go. <laughs> yeah. He's just never gone, has he? No, he hasn't. They, they they don't understand the bite that we talk about down there. So we can figure something out. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can set something up um, so we can head down there. Uh, but that's interesting. I I didn't know that that you had a. Um, that's kind of cool to see how you have a set plan because I think a lot of people now who listen to this are probably going to follow that because I am. You know what I mean? Like I would just go out. Honestly, I. I, I wouldn't even have a game plan. I <laughs> just like, all right, I just go out and fish. And then I would just chuck whatever lure, whatever. I, Cause you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like I said, I just go out there and fish. I'm like, all right, I didn't catch anything with the, the crappie lure. Then I just throw something that maybe catches a bass. All right. It didn't nothing try for a while. You know what I'm saying? Like there was yeah. no, there was no reasoning behind my madness. And I go, I'm excited. I just can go fish without being, being so stinking cold. But I think, yeah, you know, but I think you're right. If, if you set up, you'll have more success. I think if you have a plan, like you're saying, like, okay, I want to go attack these guys and, you know, um, this species and then this species, this is the ones that should be biting. I think that might be a better, instead of the chaotic plan, what I just put on my whole backpack of lures and just go because. Yeah. That, 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 that spring bite is basically it's, it's centered around the spawn okay. pretty much. Cause yeah. Cause, uh, Walleye spawn first. Uh, I guess catfish don't spawn until the summertime. Yeah. But they kind of put on the feedback early, and they're 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 the most accessible uh, early in the year. Honestly, like mm. a lot of people don't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why okay. I target them and walleyes. Yeah. And then after that, it's just it's just based on the spawn because walleye spawn first, mm-hmm. and then you have the white bass and wipers. They'll spawn next. After that's crappies, and after that's bluegills. And once everything spawns, they start moving into their summer patterns. And then it's anything goes after that. For me, it's probably back to catfish, white bass and wipers. I kind of I kind of get away from uh, crappies during the summer because mm-hmm. they're they're bait during the summer. So <laughs> yeah. We we can talk to River Certified about that. He's just like, no, <laughs> that's not his thing. So he goes, That's all bait, man. It's all good, dude. I, but man, we ate some crappies down in Kansas. Oh man, it was it was so good. I haven't had crappies in a long time. That's what I'm saying. We haven't had good crappies, like a you know, massive crop. Because like I said, this this ice season we did. I I didn't get on that great of a, a crappie bite at all this year. Um, the one time I think one time I went with you, and it wasn't even like monster crappies. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, so yeah, I mean we we I caught a few that were decent, but actually I caught a 14 incher, so that was pretty good. I think that's a good crappie anywhere you go. But most of them were nine, ten inches. So with the ice season over, anything you learned in particular, um, <laughs> new at all? You that you would do different or learn anything from ice? Since it's what over? would I do different from the ice season this past season? Oh man, it was a rough season, to be honest. And but I before agree. before I continue, I gotta crack open another beer. <laughs> I got this double night vision. From Kelowna Brewing Company. Oh, you're gonna get double night vision, bro. Oh, dude, everything I have left is either a tall boy was, or a double. I think well, what's the percentage of that one, man? That's gotta be that's pretty strong. seven point six. Eh, it's not that bad. You'll be fine. You're a big boy. Look, double night vision. You know, I'm, I'm about to get double vision here soon. <laughs> but uh anyways. but yeah, I mean uh, I would say from for me, uh this ice season, I would say what I've learned. To get better at is packing lighter uh, with the kids now because they love ice fishing and uh, I mean they they are completely addicted to ice fishing now they prefer to go ice fishing than any other fishing actually my kids do and I think I need to learn how to pack lighter you know what I mean because I I I got the flip over and everything I I created that smitty sled which helps and everything but it's still. Ugh, I mean, you're talking about over a hundred and some pounds of gear to pull. I got to figure out a way to just pack lighter, um, whether it's the chairs or whatever. I, I just got to figure that out. I think, I think that's going to be my goal for next year is that I just get the necessities and just really pack lighter and just be more efficient. You know what I mean? Um, get an ATV, then weight won't matter. Well, we were trying, we we're trying for it at the Yellow Bass Bonanza. We just, they didn't draw our name, man. Yeah. <laughs> But no, I, I hear you on that. But yeah, it's just... for me, though, man, I don't know, dude. Just fish more, I guess. Yeah, that's nope. it, really. 
I, I, I did, did. Did you feel that way too? I, I felt like right. I, I really didn't get out as much. Uh, I this year for sure. This year versus the last like five years, I would say this has probably been the least amount I went out ice fishing. I felt like. Oh, I fished plenty. <laughs> I guess I gotta <laughs> fish more. Must be nice, but I, I just felt like I, I need to fish more. So there, there was a few lakes that I wanted to hit that I, I didn't, you know, take the opportunity to go. Mm-hmm. You know, whether that was for you know distance or conditions at the time, I was ready to go. So maybe try new lakes next year, new spots, more spots, more spots. So springs here. What's your? Uh, I guess what's your what's your goal, man, for this fishing season, fishing spring spring wise? Let's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to what I was. I mentioned this earlier. Live scope on the kayak. That oh. that is the that is the end game for basically the rest of the the okay. whole season honestly just finding structure and using that live scope all right i'm gonna have to go with oh speaking of that i i really need to get the kayak dude um i'm, I'm still everybody's probably like wondering like do you see you're gonna get here i go i know uh but the the two models that i wanted to get are completely sold out and won't be back until like summer i'm gonna have to um get something else to hold me off or just, just get that of, one on Facebook, man. I know that's man. the one I know I was looking at. It, I, it might be, but I mean, we'll see. It's, it's still a big chunk change. Um, it, it's going to be a big chunk of change either way. No, nope, I get it. No, nope, I get it. But I just want to make sure I, I have enough time to take it out. You know what I'm saying? Cause there's, there's a lot of trips I want to take this year, man. I want, I, I want to go fishing. I want to go Kansas more. I want to go to Nebraska. We haven't been to Nebraska. I haven't been to Nebraska fishing in a while. So I know we're from Iowa and everything, but I mean, we actually have a lot of listeners in Nebraska too. So we love fishing out there too. And I want to get out there and catch some of the fish out there. So hopefully we can get out there. Um, it'd be, you know, it'd be interesting. Cause I, I, st- I want to catch my PB catfish this year, this, this spring, summer, whatever the case may be, open water season. I want to catch my PB catfish. Well, uh, what is your PB right now? I think that the biggest catfish I've ever caught was like maybe, I don't, I, I didn't have a weigh skill. It was maybe like 14, 15. Dude, that's huge for Iowa. <laughs> I, I know it was, it was huge, but. Like channel cat? Uh, I think so. I think it was a channel like, cat. Dude, you, you probably it was like find- years ago. You 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 probably won't find a bigger channel cat in Iowa, honestly. Really? Than a fourteen pound? Okay, I I don't know. That's why I, it was a it was a, it was it was easily a fourteen pound cat. It was as big as I remember. It was maybe about it was at least four or five years ago, and I caught it's, it. With, it's hard to put a weight on the fish. If you yeah, don't have a true. It was about as big as Trust my leg. Me, all was, you gotta do, all you gotta do is put it on Facebook true, and true. put a number. I guess. You're gonna be wrong no matter what. Yeah, you're right. But it was like five years ago. So, face, I mean, Facebook was there. I don't know. I guess I could have posted it, but it was about as big as my leg. I remember because I was with my my cousins and we we're up and we're, we're at Red Rock and I caught it on, on the uh, on shore or on the banks. And it was about as big as my leg. So the flathead, I could see. But Channel Cat, I don't know. Not in yeah. Iowa. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's hard. It's hard to catch a 10 pound channel in Iowa. It might have been a actually it might have been a flathead. I don't remember, man. It was like five, six years ago. You might it might have been you might be right. It might have been a, a flathead. It could have been when you say PB catfish, you, that could just mean any it. catfish. Yeah, but it was just any catfish. But I want to catch a it would be nice to see that that would be my goal is to catch like a 20 pounder of anything. It'd be kind of cool. Well, your best bet in Iowa would be a flathead. There you and go. Then so if you want to be I was like, I'm trying to beat that 20 pound range, and and our your be- that best bet is blue blue cats. Really? Well, then, well, we gotta. Go. I might have gotta, to make it. You gotta, you gotta make the trip though. That's yeah, the I gotta make a trip. That I'll I'll see. Um, we gotta get the boss's permission. Well, they got cabins down there, right? Airbnb, dude. Um, yeah, we can do that. Okay, I'll look that up. Whoa. Like the Airbnb that uh, me and Mister Yang stayed at. Pretty good. It was like eight, 80 bucks a night. I mean, what it was hell? it was a trailer. Yeah, like a, still, dude. Like it looked small on the inside. It was nice. in there. It was way huge. They had washer dryer, oh, man. a master bedroom, two bathrooms. Jeez. Okay. No. What? what, what we'll kitchen? Like, dude. What more do you need? We'll set something up. Maybe in May. We'll we'll see. If we can. That might not be a bad idea. How, how much are the cabins? Depends on where we go. Oh, are you talking about the 
the Cavs would normally, normally get. Yeah. Uh, I think they're like 170 a night, maybe. No, no, the... no, 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 no. 75 a night. I'm sorry. Like 70, 75 to 80 bucks a night or something. So it's not bad at all. Dude, the Airbnb is it's like same price, but you get a whole house. All right. Well, we'll have to do that then. But like you said, no, I I, I do want to catch a, a catfish. That would be my goal to uh, catch a catfish over 20 pounds. Um, I would still like to, I think we still can get out to Nebraska to catch my, my PB walleye. I think we, we have an opportunity. Yeah. Nebraska has got some big fish. It just goes to show fishing. If you want to catch big fish, don't come to Iowa. <laughs> but if you want to catch multiple species, come to Iowa. Or just don't come to Iowa at all. Don't don't bust out our spot, right, Kit? Yeah, yeah. Don't bust our spots. <laughs> don't bust it's, out our spot. The fishing is tough as it is. <laughs> exactly. Don't come to Iowa, man. It sucks. Yeah, that's why we're talking about taking trips to other states. Yeah. I mean, which is uh, which is kind of like a contentious thing too. You know, people always complain, oh, these out of towners and yeah. blah blah blah. But I don't keep every fish I catch, so whatever. On that note, man. Um. I'm excited. Excited for the open water season. Uh, I still got to get my order in with Saki fishing, uh, get a new uh, open water rod with him. And like I said, man, I, I'm just excited just to, to catch some catfish to, to go fishing without carrying a sled and you just, just take one pole and a small little backpack and good to go type of thing. So, um, other than that, man, I mean, you got anything else guy? Until you get the kayak, and then it's just even more stuff. I'm trying. I'm trying. Hey, I'm, I'm working on it. I just, yeah, I'm so picky, though. A little, well, so picky and just indecisive. Well, plus, I have another hobby I got into all of a sudden. So, well, that's, I that's, guess all I got is, you know, I'm, I got that live scope on the kayak. I think that's going to be my main focus because once I saw those fish underneath those docks, wanna, yeah, my, my main thing is just, you know, finding structure with the live scope and then fishing, you know, trying to pull fish off that structure, whether that's rock piles, fish docks, you know, trees, whatever. Yeah. I want to snipe some wipers off, off of a windblown point on, on Lake. All right. You got to show us that, show us that video. When you can snipe those, uh, uh, wipers with the live scope, that'd be pretty cool, man. It'd be pretty cool to see, dude. Uh, other than that, man, uh, we'll do, hopefully we'll, we'll have a guest on the, the next couple of episodes here and we'll hopefully we're, we're in open water season guys. So, uh, make sure you guys, you know what, I, we never really ask uh, any of our listeners or, you know, people who watch the, the show or anything, uh, comment and message us. Uh, is there any, any topics, anything in particular you guys want us to talk about any guests you guys want us to try and see if we can get, I mean, you know, we're so big, you know what? I'm not gonna lie. I was a little bit butthurt when somebody called our sh- podcast, a little podcast. I'm not gonna lie. I was a little oh. butthurt about that, but it was a little condescending. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Whatever. Whatever. But, uh, let us know, man. I mean, uh, seriously, message us, uh, text us, you know, direct, you know, PM, DM, whatever the hell you call that. Let us know, man, if there's any topics, any uh, specific things that you guys want to learn about or know about that we can look into, talk about research, uh, and like I said, or get a guest on for. So, I mean, we, we never really asked you guys about that. So this year, I think we're going to, I want to open it up to you guys a little bit more. You guys have a say in, in our, our show of what you guys want to hear about because as much as I want to talk about fishing with kit and cause I suck at it, you know, you can only hear about it so much, man. Mm. <laughs> All right, guys. Till next time, dude. Cheers. All right. Cheers. Dude. Sunblock. Sun can block kit. <laughs> look at your face. dude. So I can't, I can't look at anything else, man. I'm sorry, dude. You, you met right. Your colors match the, your, your red logo right now, dude. Probably. <laughs> I don't know. It's first, it's the first burn in of the year. So it's all right. All right. All right. Except for this part up here. <laughs> all right, man. I'll just say I went skiing. Excuse me. And then, uh, you know, yeah, there was cool. these boat docks. Ooh. So today, I don't know if he's going to leave this in here or not. I got the unicorn, unicorn cooler. Yeah.